first of all, before we start, I just want to really make the point that um, our church is an organization that has so many volunteers who are helping us, right? So this church is possible because we have so many people who are volunteering and serving the church, right? Right now, we are in the, in the midst of finding uh, our new lead pastor for New City, and the hours, uh, it's been over a year that the LPNC has been working on this. So the LPNC has a number, a group of, how many people was it? Is it 12? Is it 12 people? 11? 11 people who have been putting on their time, meeting almost weekly, uh, trying to find the right person, going through references, um, interviewing people, and then they've been doing so much work, and all of that is just by serving. It's all of that is, none, none of them are getting paid. They're all doing, they're putting their own times and hours into uh, finding a new lead pastor, and that's amazing, right? Like, that's amazing. That's a blessing from God. For example, every single Sunday, we have so many people who come super early who set up this whole thing, right? This whole thing takes so much time to set up. Thank you so much. And they come consistently every single Sunday. Uh, uh, one of those people is, I, I, I used to play a game with uh, Karen and Jenny to see who comes earlier in the morning because they come so early. Uh, but we come, uh, they come, I think, 7.30, 7.40-ish a.m., and they start setting up until 10 for worship. And, and, and then the worship team. The worship team meets during the, um, during the week through Zoom, and they prepare, and then they do the whole preparation, and they, they do the whole, um, like, this is how we're going to do it. These are the songs. Sing in this part. Don't sing on this part. There's a lot of preparations that happens, and all of that is volunteer work, right? And so they volunteer. And the reason why I'm sharing all this is because all of these ministries are done by people who serve in the church, and that's a beautiful thing. And for a moment, we need to recognize that these people are putting their own time and their own hearts uh, into serving the church. So can we recognize them real quick? To everybody who served us in city, thank you so much. And uh, I want to tell you a funny story. One of these Sundays, I was like just, you know, serving at the church. And I was like, like, uh, setting up. And then I, I see this, this uh, another Asian person serving lady and she and she was like oh and I was like you look familiar and she was like huh I think she already knew but actually uh her name is Rena and I was serving like I was looking at her it's like you look familiar and then it turns out um I I she had been my therapist uh, <laughs> uh and uh Rena actually was my um marriage therapist with my wife and I my couples therapist at Fuller because we were there with my wife, and then, you know, I had met her years ago, and um, she was the one who was helping us to uh, become a better uh, couple and work on the things that we had to work on, and I was like, you're Rena? I was like, oh, Rena, hi! And it was, like, it was so crazy when I met her. I was like, oh, you're serving here? Like, what? I was like, yeah, and I think she already knew, and she was actually waiting until I, I would actually recognize her. I don't know. I don't think, I don't, I, I don't know if she was even expecting it, but then it finally clicked and said, oh, that's you. And then my wife saw her. I was like, oh my God. And my wife knew right away. So it was something wrong with me. Um, but the reason why I'm sharing all this is because uh, today I'm going to work together with Rena to share a message about serving, right? And so let's b give a big hand to Rena as she comes forward. Everybody say hi to Rena. Hi. So, uh, um, Rena, could you introduce yourself for us real quick of who you are? And I, I know I didn't put that question in there. Uh, but could you just introduce yourself a little bit to all of us? Well, thank you for that unexpected introduction <laughs> <laughs> um, that I had no idea would be shared. <laughs> um, so my name is Rena Song. I am a psychologist. Um, I'm currently a therapist. Um, and I work mostly with um, Asian immigrants currently. Um, and I started coming to New City last February. Um, so I've been here for a year and a half. So Rena, the reason why I asked you to come here and, and, and share with us today is because um, I've seen how you serve, um, but you also serve in a very um, healthy manner, right? Because I, I, I've also seen you when you come, and then some Sundays you're really on, and but some Sundays you're <laughs> you're like, like you make your space and you don't like. There's Sundays that you serve and you don't serve, and I was like, oh, that's really healthy, and you're very consistently always present and coming. 
Um, and so I wanted to ask you, why do you serve? That's a really good question. Um, I was really surprised when you asked me because I don't think I put in a terribly amount, a, a lot of time to the church. Um, I know so many people who have invested so much of their weeks, their hours um, into serving the church. So um, I'm honored that you asked me and I'm also surprised, so thank you. <laughs> um, so why do I serve? Um, so when I was thinking about this question, we process what serving means. And um, we kind of discussed how serving means loving. And we came to discussing how um, those two are related because of the way Jesus loved and served. Um, and so for me as a Christian, um, I consider myself a disciple of Christ. Um, I, I, I think about, um, so in Chinese, the word um, Christian is literally Christ's disciple. So um, for me, that's, uh, I guess, a part of my identity. And um, so if I think about being a Christ disciple, then I would listen to what Jesus teaches. And Jesus asks us, um, especially during the Last Supper, um, to love one another, um, especially because he has loved one another, um, all of us. Um, and so I think um, given that, um, when I try to serve and to love, um, I am loving the person that Jesus loves um, and also doing what he asks. So even when it could be hard. Mm. Yeah. What's the word, the actual Chinese word of, I don't know, that's throwing in, you off. In Chinese, yes, yes. I, um, I just want to it's know. literally qi tu tu, which is disciple of Christ. Shi, shi tu tu. Yeah. Shi, okay, I said, <laughs> sorry, I'm <laughs> trying my best here. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Um, also, like, you know, I think serving has a lot to do with uh, loving. Because I, I, for me, at least, as I was trying to uh, come up with this sermon, I was thinking about serving and loving being very close to each other. So uh, as a mental health professional, um, I wanted to ask you also, like, what does it look like to love in a healthy life? And so with that question, um, also something that we discussed. Um, and so when I was thinking about that, um, the word health feels very personal. So um, each of us is knowledgeable about our own health, um, and we can only speak to that. And I think sometimes we may not even know if we are healthy or not. Um, it's not something that might, we might be aware of. Um, so yeah, it's a very personal quest question. Um, I think I would have to ask myself, like, do I feel well? Um, and if I'm not sure about that question, I might ask God, God, do you think I feel I'm what I am well? Or um, I might ask God, like, um, you know, God, what do you think I need? Um, or I might ask myself that question, what do I need um, if I am not feeling well or healthy? Um, so I think with that being said, um, I also think about um, the concept of love um, that Jesus teaches, which is um, he asks us to love others as we love ourselves. Um, so um, I think serving or loving uh, does involve um, how we um, take care of ourselves. Um, so asking myself, what do I need? Um, we all have many, many layers of needs. Um, and bring that to God or asking God, like, yeah, God, what do you think I need? And I, I really do believe God answers that question. Um, and, and I think that involves a degree of like taking responsibility for myself. Mm. Um, and I think when I do that, I can love others better. Because mm. I think oftentimes um, we may not love others as well when we are um, like at our capacity or um, very stressed and we, um, you know, unintentionally, um, like, like put our stress on other people. Mm. Yeah. Mm. You know, another thing that I think the reason why I chose this topic is because in the past, I mean, many of us have experiences of serving at a church and as a Christian and giving so much into the church and feeling so empty and just feeling like, um, like something, like I don't have a life anymore. It feels like I'm giving too much or sometimes there are churches that like ask for service, people who serve, but then they, they ask for too much. And there's like, oh, can you do this and that and that and that and that. So with that said, like we're hearing how serving is just part of 
what we do as people who have received love, but how do we do it as Christians in a healthy way? How can we serve others and serve the church in a healthy way as Christians? As Christians. Um, when I think of um, how to do things as Christians, I, um, I think I bring these questions to God, like to, to Jesus, like, what, what do you want me to do? How do you want my life to look like? Um, what do you envision for me? How do you want me to serve? All of these questions. And I think God does answer those questions when we ask him. Um, God. And, um, and as to the question of um, how do you know when um, you're giving like, like just a lot, like everything that you've got. Um, I, I, again, I think that's a, a personal question and it takes um, a lot of practice to be attuned to what's going on um, with ourselves. And, um, and, uh, and people ask, um, and sometimes, again, it's, um, there's no ill will, there's no ill intention to asking, um, but oh, I think we need to know ourselves to an extent or what God wants for us and be able to decide whether we will um, uh, like say yes or say no, um, because I, I can't, um, I'm not able to um, provide that assistance or I can't, I can't serve in that capacity right now. Um, I, I think, um, and I, I, I truly do think that people can accept both answers um, when it's just given from a place of like, I, I, like I can't and um, yeah, it's, it's, it's about like um, kind of like, I guess the popular language these days is boundaries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah, and definitely. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate it because you bring a perspective that me, like as a pastor, can't bring, and I'm, I'm really grateful. Um, and, and thank you so much for always, like I think your profession is actually really beautiful because you deal with a lot of people's like, like brokenness and hardships and, and you're there to listen and listen. I've noticed that a lot of counselors don't really give me advice. They just listen. And then through it, I'm able to like realize, oh, this is what I should do, right? But it's, it's not like telling me what to do, right? It's sort of like listening and allowing that person to find their own um, answers on it. And I think it's such a difficult thing because as a pastor, of course, I preach, right? I, I speak, but then as, a, as somebody who listens and, and, and counsels, I think it's just so beautiful that you're doing a job that it just, it's so important for so many people. So thank with you. that said, thank you Can so I much. Can I add one more thing yes. about like, I didn't really think about this when I introduced myself, but I came to New City because a, a, a pastor friend in, like told me about New City. And when I came, I just, uh, I really loved the church. And I think part of it was just seeing how people serve. Mm. And I felt like everyone can participate. And um, everyone works together um, as to the best of our abilities. And um, it didn't feel like this perfect production. Um, it felt very organic, and it felt like a community, and it felt like um, like whoever can give, you can participate. And I, I truly think participating is really valuable. Um, I think we all want to participate, but maybe there are barriers to participating. Um, so yeah, I think that's one thing that I really loved about New City, like the whole setup. I was like, oh, the, the, the cross looks very rugged. That's great. <laughs> um, every Sunday, the band is in a different spot based on where the um, outlets are. It's just, um, yeah, I, I thought all of that was really beautiful. So. <laughs> that was actually a good thing, guys. So <laughs> but, once again, thank you so much, Rina. Let's give a big hand to Rina. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for serving. That's such a powerful um, just perspective on what it looks like to serve in a healthy way, you know? And, and this is something that I really wanna talk about because we as, um, as Christians sometimes, we uh, serve for the wrong reasons. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, let, let me explain a little bit. When I was young, back in the days, uh, like uh, James in his early 20s, right? I was way, way skinnier than I am right now. I was like way cooler. Um, actually, that's, that was, um, um, that's when I met Angie. Uh, Angie and I, we go way back far. I was um, volunteering at a, a, a camp for pastor's kids, uh, missionary kids. Uh, and in Korea, 
there's a lot of missionaries. Korea is the number two country that sends missionaries all around the world. And so there's a lot of missionaries. So there is a ministry for missionary kids. And Angie was part of that camp. I think Tina might have also been part of that camp too. And I was the worship uh, leader, a volunteer in that camp, right? And back then, and then I think that camp was actually the place where I decided to become a, a pastor. Um, and, but that, then that's also the, the camp where I met Angie, and then Angie was, I think, junior high student and everything, and she was like, I was playing guitar, and she was like, oh, like, I play guitar too, and then I gave her some tips, and then she like, and, and then that, that was her beginning of her, like, starting to play guitar and sing and be able to be a worship leader, an amazing worship leader as she is right now, a worship pastor. And such a privilege um, to be able to have that history with her. Like, she's also another person where I was walking at New City, I was like, what? What are you doing here? And she was like, what are you doing here? It's like, so, yeah, it's crazy. New City is a crazy place. But the reason why I'm sharing all that is because back then, like, yes, I wanted to do it, but I wasn't doing it for the right reasons. I'm sorry, Angie. But <laughs> I wasn't leading for the right reasons. Why? Because I think in the beginning of that camp, I was like, just like, look at me, I'm so cool. You know, like, like I love playing guitar, and then, like, I like singing. And then when I sing, and when you sing at a church, like, um, people sing along. It's like, oh, how cool is that? You know, it's like, and then you get to say things. And then, but I was, I was leading worship for the wrong reasons. I was a good musician. But I was leading it because I, like, I liked the feeling of, of being there and, and also like leading people. But also there was this sense of like, oh, this feels great. Like, I was trying to get something out of it. You see, I was serving for the wrong reasons. And, and, and this is not just in my story. This also, like sometimes we serve because we want to be justified as good Christians. You know what I mean? Like sometimes we go and we help the needy because, it, not because we love them, but it's because if I'm a good Christian, I should do this. If I'm a good Christian, I should do this. So then I, I check the box and I say, yes, I am a good Christian. And then sometimes we serve because we want to make God happy. And so it feels like if I serve God, then God is going to be happier with me. Therefore, better things are going to happen to me. Like we, 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 we put that whole idea of give and take. Like, you know how sometimes you give something and you take something. And obviously, we, we feel like, oh, then God, I have to give something to God in order to receive from God. And, and then it also makes us to be able to say proud, prideful and, and say, God, I did all these things for you, yet why aren't you blessing me? God, I went to church. I, I, I served the church. I did all these things. Lord, why am I struggling right now? Right? Why is my life like this when I've done so much for you? You see, that's not serving for the right reasons, right? You're serving because in, so, in some ways you're saying, God, I did this for you, so you should do this for me too. So serving is something that is so beautiful and so necessary, but at the same time, it can be something very dangerous if we serve for the wrong reasons. And also, when you serve for the wrong reasons, sometimes that's why there's so much drama at churches sometimes, because there's like, it wasn't, for the right reasons. And there's a lot of like, you did not recognize me or you did not see me when I did this for you and then you did not like, so it becomes this place where serving becomes sort of like this proof of me being a good Christian, right? But that's not the example that Jesus gave us of what it looks like serving, right? The example that Jesus gives is very, very clear. Jesus gave the biggest sacrifice to serve us all. Yet the reason behind it, it was to bring us eternal love and freedom from death. It was freely given to us, and we have the choice to receive it or not. What do I mean by this? You see, Jesus, when he came to this world and he loved us so very much, he didn't love us with a condition. He loved us unconditionally saying, I love you and I'm doing this and I'm sacrificing my own self so that you can be with me forever in heaven. This is a requirement. This is possible. I'm doing this because I love you so very much. And he gave all of that love for us. But then at the end, it's an open-ended love. Meaning that usually when you love 
You expect something back? Because I've loved you now, you should believe in me and you should be saved. No, but God said, I love you and I've given this beautiful love to all of us. And the gospel was shared to all of us, but the free will was also given to us. Because that's the way you love someone. You don't force them to love you back. You say, I love you, I love you, I love you. And that's how Christ loved us and served us. His motivation of loving and serving was so that we could have freedom to choose God, right? And this is something really important for us to remember because that is from where we should be serving. We should be serving from a basis of love. See, my story is that I sometimes serve for the wrong reasons and love for the wrong reasons. Like uh, this week, um, I was sick from Monday to Wednesday. I had like a stomach ache and everything, and I was like very sick, and, um, and um, I had diarrhea and stuff. And then the next day, Ben, Ben starts having like at night, he starts vomiting, like he starts vomiting out of nowhere, right? And then he is very sick, he has high fever, and then I had to like wake up at 2 a.m. and I was right next to him. And I was like trying to make him feel, feel better, you know, I was like, I was helping him vomit. I was like, I would hit him in the back, and then he was like, Dad, stop! I'm vomiting! I was like, but it was like, it's like, I was trying to help. And I was helping, and I was like taking care of him, and I like washed him, and then took him back, and then he woke up again, and he vomited three times. So all throughout the night, I wasn't able to sleep even a little bit. And when I go through those things, what happens inside of me is like, I've made this sacrifice for you. I've loved you and I've served you so much. Do you know how hard it is to wake up at night and care for somebody? Like from, from birth, I've changed your diapers. I have hugged you and I've loved you. I've carried you around. Like I've been with you all this time. And I get so mad when I tell him to do something and he says, no, eat, eat your food. He's like, no, I don't want to. It makes me so, and then and there's times like, Dad, I hate you. Have you ever heard, heard that from a kid? I hate you, Dad. How could you ever do that? Like, he doesn't go as far as that, but he kind of like expresses this anger with, with, with his body, his disappointment. No iPad. You know? <laughs> and inside of me, y'all, I go like, oh my God. Yo, I've done so much for you. Like, I've like, and you dare to not listen to me? So what's happening is inside of me, there's this heart that says, if I've served you, you should know better and do that for me too. If I've done something for you, you should do that. And you should give me the love back that I've given you. But that's so, so wrong. When you expect somebody to love you back because you have loved them, you are not loving like Christ. Love means, even if you don't give me anything back, if I truly love you, that's how you love. You don't love expecting to receive. You don't love expecting to get something from them. You don't love to control them. Because I've loved you, you must do this for me now. That's not love. The love that God is talking about and the service that God is talking about is saying, I love you because I love you. There's freedom in your choice, whether to love me back or not. Because a forced love could never be real love, right? Why am I saying all this? It's because this is the wrong reason to serve, to love. And we should have a posture of serving and loving that is different. This very short verse in 1 John 4, 19. This is the posture that we ought to have. All together? The only reason why we should love others, and this is the posture that we should love as Christians, because we love because he first loved us. Has any of you gone through 12 steps in this room? Do you know about 12 steps? 12 steps is a recovery program. And through that recovery program, people um, go through the 12 steps. 
and through it, they, they really start changing and they recover from addictions and all those steps have a, a very meaningful meaning. But through that process, you always have a sponsor who sponsors you, right? But that sponsor who sponsors you is somebody who also previously had an addiction. That person is somebody who went through the program, to the 12-step program, and got better and was freed and experienced freedom from addiction. They experienced this amazing freedom through that process. They are free now and they have so much joy that they now want to serve those people who are beginning their journey in their 12 steps. I believe that, that as Christians, that represents so well what it looks like for us to serve others, right? We serve others because of the love of God, because we have received the love of God, but because we have experienced and tasted the freedom of the love of God. Amen? Amen. Do y'all remember your amazing grace moment in your life? Because I know who I am, y'all. I am a sinner, yet by the grace of God, I can serve. I was saved, a wretch like me. I was saved by God, and I can serve. That is the biggest blessing ever. We serve because we have received such an amazing grace. And you all have received that too, amen? Some of us have experienced this. Some of us haven't. And I want to acknowledge you too. If you're here and you haven't experienced the grace and the love of God and the amazing grace moment in your life, I pray that we can do this together. And I pray that we can encourage you all to also experience that amazing grace. Because once you taste it, you never go back. Once you have in and out, you never go back. Sorry, you Shay Shack lovers, but sorry, Fred. I'm an in and out California guy, but once you taste that, you tell everybody how good in and out is, right? The same way, once you have taste the love of Christ and you have been served by God, you want to serve other people. Like those people in the 12 step who become sponsors. They sponsor because they have received the grace of other sponsors. And now they tasted the freedom and they want to give that freedom to other people. That is the posture that we should serve with. Amen? Amen. So, we talked about the posture of how we should serve. Right? And that we shouldn't be serving for the wrong reasons. The reason should be, I have received by, from God. Therefore, I want to give that love to other people so that other people can experience that too. So, let's look at how Jesus served himself. Right? And we're going to go through some, a couple of passages here. But in Matthew 14, 13, uh, let's read it together. One, two, three. Heard. Mm -hmm. So this verse occurs right after Jesus learns about the beheading of John the Baptist. Overwhelmed by grief and seeking to process the news, Jesus withdraws to a solitary place. However, the crowds follow him, and despite his need of solitude, he has compassion on them and heals their sick. But you see very clearly here that Jesus, he withdrew by boat to a privately and solitary place. That's one way he served. Another way, in Matthew 14, 23. Let's read it together. One, two, three. After he had dismissed them, Amen. So this happens after feeding the 5,000. Jesus sends his disciples ahead of him by boat while he dismissed the crowds. He then goes up on the mountainside by himself to pray. This moment of solitude allows him to recharge and connect with the Father after a day of intense ministry, right? Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Let's see how else Jesus serves. Uh, in Mark 1, 35, all together, one, two, three. Right. 
You see, if you look at all these verses, well, actually, that wasn't the verse that I wanted to share, but are there, aren't there other verses? Mark for, uh, 1, 35. Yes. Thank you. Yes, Mark 1, 35. Oh, it's okay. But you can see here in Mark 1, 35, Jesus, in the very early morning, was start. Jesus got up and left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Luke 5, 16, but Jesus often withdrew to lonely places and prayed. Luke 6, 12, one of those days Jesus went out to the mountainside to pray and spent the night praying to God. What do you see here that Jesus does? Solo time. Solo time. He prays by himself. Every time he does ministry, after ministry, he takes time to rest, right? So it's not like you see very clear after feeding the 5,000 people, the first thing that he does is he rests. And this is just giving us an idea of what serving looked like. We, we in our head go, Jesus gave the ultimate sacrifice. So he gave so much of himself and he loved us so very much. He did, but he also rested. And why is this important? Because sometimes we get caught up in this idea that we have to do God's work because we have received the grace of God. And we have to work, 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 and give, 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 give. When in reality, Jesus himself, who gave the most, talks about the importance of resting. The importance of serving, yet also the importance of resting. This is important, y'all. Because we as Christians should do the same thing. This is the example we have. We have to learn how to care for ourselves. Jesus prayed and he rested. Jesus prayed and he rested. When? In the mornings, in solitude, by himself, when there's no other distractions. This was a very important foundation for God's ministry. Amen? So we need to learn how to serve in a healthy way, like Christ did, right? And in Mark 6, 31 and 32, the passage that we just read, then because so many people were coming and going and they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, come with me by yourself to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. Come with me by yourself to a quiet place. And get some rest. That's Christ's words, y'all. You see, we need to learn how to do this. We need to learn how to rest. We need to learn how to set boundaries for yourself to rest and worship. Right? So serving is beautiful and serving is very important and it's the, the work of God. But also we need to be able to learn how to say no. Because the problem with this is, is sometimes we keep on serving and serving and serving and we forget about the importance of caring for yourself and even worshiping. Have you ever been in a situation where you have been serving so much that sometimes you realize, I'm not even worshiping anymore? That happens so often at churches. And I want, us to, I want to encourage you all that it's important for you to also say no so that you can rest and be fresh like Christ did. During ministry, he always rested. We need to do the same. So we should be able to sometimes say no. And it should be okay. And it is okay. At New City, we're trying to make a culture. When you say no to me or to any pastors or any leaders, don't feel guilty. We want to see this as if Christ did that. We should do it too. But then to rest and to what? And to worship. So if you're saying no to something and then you're saying like, no, and then I just want to be home and just, that's cool too. That's self-care. But at the same time, it's important for us to also make, make a space so that we can actually worship. So if serving is getting on the way of worshiping, there's something wrong with that too, right? So it is important for us to serve, but also to make space for us to worship. This is the only way we can love better. When you are rested and when you can worship, you can love better and serve better. John 15, 15, it says, one, two, three. I know I do not call you servants any longer 
because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my father. So this is uh, an important message that I wanted to share too because it, this is what Jesus is saying. See, Jesus, when he did ministry, he uh, thought of his disciples not only as his students, but it was, it was his support system. You, if you look into it, the way I no longer call you servants because servants does not know his master's business. Instead, I've called you friends, right? You can see that Jesus relied on the disciples to be his friends, right? Do you know this story about when Jesus and Mark, when Jesus was, uh, was praying in Gethsemane, and then he, he went away and he prayed, and this was before he was going to be crucified and all of that, and he was praying. In Mark 14, 32 to 42, he says, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch. What happens next? He found them sleeping. He said to Simon Peter, Simon, why are you asleep? Couldn't you keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. What is he saying? It's like, I am about to be crucified. I'm about to die. And he was crying to God. And what, was, what, what, what was the prayers of Jesus when he was over there in Gethsemane? It was like, if you can take away this cup away from me, Lord, please take it away. And he comes back and he told him, could you not, like, could you stay awake? And they were sleeping. How many times? Do you all know how many times they were sleeping? Three times. Three times. <laughs> comes back. It tells them, please don't sleep. He goes there and prays. Keep up with me. Comes back. They're sleeping again. It's like, please don't. He goes out. Why was he saying, please don't sleep? He needed the prayer of his disciples. Christ needed that community to be behind him and say, yes, we're here together. And he was so disappointed and so broken when they weren't able to do that. This shows our, that Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, didn't do it by himself either, right? He had a community of people who supported him. So in order, in order for us to serve in a healthy way, the second point that I want to make is that it's very important for us to have a community where we can rest, a community that we, where we can be supported, right? So come to Summer Feast. <laughs> rest, find people that can be your support. Church, and you know why uh, church is, it can be online, but you know why it's nice to be offline too? Is because you have people who can be there for you in your hardest moments. And yes, we are all called to serve and do God's work and to love others and to serve, but if we don't have a community that sustain us to be able to do this, it is not possible. So I want to encourage you all to also find that community that can sustain you like Christ did. Like Christ had his disciples to be with him while he was doing God's work. It is important for us to be able to have a community. And this is why church exists. I want to make this conclusion for today's sermon. Listen to me very clearly. God does not need us to do his work in this world. One more time. God does not need us to do his work in this world. He has empowered us to do the work of God through us. We sometimes fall into this idea that we have received the grace of God and now we are responsible to do God's work. But in reality, can you acknowledge that God doesn't need you to do the work. He could do it himself. God could do it. God could do the work like that. Yet God has empowered us to do the work. Why? Because through serving, we experience something beautiful. And it's good for us. And we experience God's love when we share with others. But God does not need us to do the work. 
So therefore, when you serve, you need to always remember that you are not the only person who can do this work, right? It kind of sounds like, Pastor James, you're telling us not to serve a church. <laughs> that is not it, right? We need y'all's help. Without you, you're, you're serving um, this church, it would be very difficult for us to have a church. But what I'm saying is, churches so many times um, becomes a place where a lot of people come, get hurt, and leave. And there's so many stories of people who have come to church and they, they love this church and they serve and they give so much, but sometimes at the end of the day, they go like, I hate church. I don't believe in church no more. Why? Because we as a church sometimes hurt people, right? Or sometimes we are not good at setting boundaries ourselves to say no so that we can be in a healthy place and serve the church well. So yes, we need you all. If, like This could be a call to serve. If you find yourself and you find places that you can serve, please come, help us. We need y'all's help. But at the same time, learn how to serve in the way Christ served, which is resting, which is able to say no to things, which is saying committing in a way that is healthy, that says, this is how much I can give to you right now in my life because of my current situations. Give and serve from abundance, right? If you do not have abundance from within, how could you serve others? So thank you so much for listening to this sermon. And if you would like to serve, please do so. But always remember the importance of resting in God. The importance of knowing that you are not the only one who can do this work. Yet when you do it, do it with joy. It's a privilege to be able to do it but also know that God wants you to serve from a healthy place. So let's rethink what serving looks like. Let's have an idea of looking at serving out of the box. Thank you so much.